Welcome back, Insider. So one of my biggest struggles in the last few weeks, and I don't know, maybe a year, I guess you can say, was sizing. Although I wasn't really focused on sizing as much last year. And one thing I've realized is trying to fill or get like a $20,000 share size and you're doing $1,000 orders just doesn't get you there. Sometimes it the price quickly gets down and then pops up and then you only have $2,000 worth of share size, even though you wanted maybe 5,000 or 10,000. And I've noticed that's been one of my big problems. So today I've developed a little bit of a system and I think I'm gonna do this going forward and I want you guys to keep this system in mind as we review the live trades today because you'll see me applying this. And today it worked really well, even though it was kind of shaky out here and I was a little bit nervous. So let me know what you guys think about this, but right now an A plus setup size would be around $20,000. That's kind of my current milestone. So I want to get to that $20,000 size on an A plus setup with 25% lot. So sizing in, let's say on a $5 stock with 1,000 shares, 1,000 shares, 1,000 shares, 1,000 shares. So four different entries. In the past, what I've been doing is just very small share size. And I think that's been keeping me away from my entries because most of my my big profits, as you guys know, come from trades below two minutes, basically all of my profits actually. So if I have very quick trades on average, I don't have the time to size into positions slowly. So that's my thesis behind this. And again, today it worked really well and I'll show you guys exactly the trades it worked well on. Blowing up the screen a little bit more here for the tickers we traded, M-I-N-M -I, -N -N I traded and an R-B-O. This was a new ticker and this was yesterday's gap. I was a little bit tr nervous on trading M-I-N-M -N, and I'll show you guys why. So there's a new site Tom shared with me called dilutiontracker.com and it's a little bit like Finviz, but what I specifically liked about it was the fact that you can see the dilution very, very clearly, how much they've been diluting. So it's a little bit more geared towards traders. And then you can also see the offering. So there is an offering in July, 2021. This was already priced in. If you go down here a little bit further, there are January, 2024 warrants, but they're not registered yet. So you don't have to worry about that because I was really worried about an offering on these multi-day runners like we've been seeing. So when it comes to M I N M, I was like, mm, do I really want to be trading a second green day? Because we've been seeing a lot of flushes lately. So I'm happy to learn about this site and I'll keep checking it out. It might be worth checking it out. Let me know what you guys think if you already use it and some of your favorite takeaways on, on this site. I'll leave my referral link in the first pinned comment below this video so you guys can get the seven day free trial. Coming over to the recording for MINM, you can see that today is a second big green day potential. The price pre-market was roughly at 560. So we were in this key zone where we had that topping candle. So it was a little bit iffy. And if you scroll back on the daily, there's never any good second green day. So I was also a little bit iffy about that, but I was thinking, hey, maybe pre-market will get some opportunity. So I got initial trade right here. It wasn't that crazy i didn't use size and this is while i was still brainstorming my new system so i didn't do very well in size on that but it still made me 360 and at this point i thought we were actually going to pull back maybe closer to vwap get into an ascending wedge or something so i didn't go for this dip here it also had a lot of sell volumes i wasn't really interested in it it starts crawling back and i'm like oh wait up hold on this this actually might be good but the volume wasn't really convincing but at this point look at here i already have a thousand shares ready to go so this is also keeping me from trading worse setups because oftentimes if i only had like let's say 200 shares ready to go or something smaller like i used to i would probably be trading a lot more often and getting stressed out because i wouldn't be so worried about low quality setups right now trading bigger size it's making me a little bit more conservative waiting for a good setup uh, although here I'm about to do a, quite a fumble and that's why I want to share this with you. I think it's a good lesson. So this price keeps going higher there. The bid is crawling up. It's chasing the ask. And I'm like, wait a second, guys, this is actually looking like it's going to break out here, even though I wasn't in love with this overall setup. So here we go. This is where I start punching and I'm like, this is a solid breakout here. Let me try to get filled. And all of a sudden, you know, I get all of my positions filled. I'm just, I just got in with 3000. So I'm on long, six, 12, $18,000 on this position. And I'm thinking to myself, holy moly, like this is an extended stock, extended stock. And you know, now I'm all having already kind of like buyer's remorse instantly. And I'm not letting this trade work like I should, like I probably would if I had smaller size. So here I'm fumbling around a little bit too much. I already get out and and then I'm like, wait a second, guys, why am I not letting this trade work? So the last position I let it work and I make like 250 on that trade, not too bad. 
But again, if I just let the trade work, I don't know why I fumbled around so quickly. So that was a little bit embarrassing. And I did want to show it just because of that reason. However, the concept of using bigger size, I think was a really good idea. And it would have worked really well here as well. So now just going forward a little bit, this actually ended up holding a lot better. I could have let that run, of course, much longer. And I kept on looking for dips back to the 9 EMA, which didn't actually end up happening. Here, I actually wanted to get a little bit more aggressive. I thought we would sell off again, but notice how I'm just doing that starter size with 25% of my A plus setup, right? So this is an A plus setup, so I don't wanna go with 4,000 shares, but you know, these little starter sizes will already make a nice little chunk of change instead of doing like 200 or 300 shares. So it was working well. I was constantly waiting for that bigger pullback and that's exactly why I closed this position because I was hoping it would pull back more to get better size. And that, in a way, that's kind of what happened. It pops up again and I'm able to kind of work this position a little bit better. There was eventually a trade in this area where I did give back a little bit. I think, yeah, right here in this, I bought it high and then it flushed on me. I think the really interesting trade was here and how I kind of handled this one. Instead of reducing my share size, I just used less lots. So I wanna do four lots total on an A plus setup, but on a, let's say a C quality, kind of shakier setup, I might still wanna trade it, but I'm just gonna do one fill as opposed to more. And this ticker and these trades showcase that really well. Coming over to TOS now for real time, you can see that's exactly my last trade. And after that, it got really choppy. I was hoping for a little bit of a morning panic to size into this one. I didn't like buying into that first green candle. I really felt like this was an already an extended ticker and I didn't like the daily on this one, how these second green days never hold up so well. So I just couldn't get myself to trade this. And even though I already gave back on the ticker, I had no FOMO or revenge in my mind. I just was like, eh, I would like to wait for a good setup, but I never really felt like it was here on MINM. So yeah, I'm just gonna take my 587 profit. The next ticker we traded, and it's actually really nice here, again, on Dilution Tracker was NRBO, and they have popular tickers, so basically top gainers. So let's pull this one up, and also make sure you don't miss anything, which is also quite good. Nice low float again. Not as good as the low float from MINM, but still okay. And just checking out some dilution. They have an offering that was already priced in. And typically I do, or I did use Edgar, so this is exactly where all the SEC filings are posted, sec.gov. It works really well. However, you do have to do a little bit of digging. I usually would just control F and search offerings and I would search Warren. So it just takes a little bit longer while Dilution Tracker does some of the heavy lifting for you. Coming over to the market open, this is where I was looking at MINM. This was kind of my original goal, looking for that morning panic, but it never happened. So I wasn't that interested and you'll see once I see it didn't do the morning panic, I basically switch away because I was looking at NRBO and NRBO was was actually moving quite nicely off the lows. And this is why when I wrote in the Discord, hey guys, NRBO is looking really good. We should be trading this. Or I didn't say we should be trading this one. I just said NRBO looking good. And then I was thinking, how do I want to trade this? Because it is below VWAP, so that's not really good. However, it does have a bit of a floor here, double bottom coming in, and we do have that potential to move back to VWAP. So that was my goal. I was thinking, okay, five minute breakout, one minute pullback, let's go. It's not like an amazing setup, but it definitely warrants, I would say one or two lots. So that'd be about $10,000. So again, I'm thinking here, okay, well, this is close to you know that 25% that I'm looking for. So at this point, I'm just waiting for that bigger pullback. Here we start getting a pullback and I placed a limit order, but it did pull back but it did already pop up, unfortunately. So I chased a little bit and boom, I luckily get that one. So let me pause this quickly because this is a really important part. I would have never had time if I was with like two, 300 shares to get a decent position size. So that's why having these bigger initial lots is so important. Remember, most of my trades don't last that long, so I don't have a lot of time to get the size I want. Now this is gonna be different for everyone, but if you're a scalper, specifically a momentum trader scalper typically trading the front side these trades are pretty quick and you don't really want to be averaging down anyway so you want to be quite aggressive on them so that initial share size is quite important so here it goes i'm looking for that move over to a new high but it kind of stalls out here a little bit so i take some quick profits 
and I basically look to do the same trade again, but this time a little bit further down because we are below VWAP and typically pullbacks are a little bit more nasty when you're below VWAP. So I was not trying to buy here. I didn't want to do the same trade twice. I was thinking we were gonna get a bigger pullback. That actually was not the case this time and it did end up moving quite higher. So at this point, I'm like, okay, well, there's probably gonna be a break of VWAP at one point, so I do wanna be attentive there. And that's what I was thinking about on this trade, but you know, I had the right idea a little bit too late. It popped in my mind. I was like, ah, you know what? This actually isn't too bad. Not to mention MINM was really, really struggling. That's why I was thinking I actually should have bought this because it might actually break. So let's go to NRBO uh, real time and see how this one looks. I, as you'll see here, I didn't get any of these trades and this one I should have done, uh, gone for, you know, that was an 18% pop. That was actually pretty nice. I did go for this pullback, which actually worked pretty well. I was waiting for a bigger sell-off. Like I was saying, I was looking for the five minute setup. That's what I got here. I just, again, had the wrong idea. It popped up 2%. I took my profits. I thought we were gonna get a double dip and then we were gonna pop up. As But what we actually had instead, we just instantly ripped up. I went for this pullback for the trend line uh, retest and this I made a nice little chunk of change. Actually, I'll, I'll share that. So just coming here. So here I'm, I was just buying off this dip looking for Quick little profit this actually took longer than i expected and let me go forward a bit okay so here's the breakout i already put my share size in i'm looking to, i'm basically sitting on the bid i'm not trying to get it too aggressive on the ask just because this ticker is a little bit flushy so i was waiting for a bit of a wick down which which kind of happened so here it is and you can see it's really struggling here so i actually moved down my limit orders because they were a little bit high i wanted to buy off the trend line but it didn't dip that far but i did get you know, two fills here. Maybe if I didn't leave it or didn't push it down so much, it would have been a little bit better. But, you know, just like that, having the bigger share size, I was able to walk away with a lot of green today, even though there wasn't any, I would say for me, amazing positions. So just using bigger share size was really the game changer today. And NRBO took so long to break out here, so I did not want to chase it, but I had some leftover limit orders and I got all 4,000 shares filled. This was a little bit stressful, because I don't want to be catching a falling knife. I just had leftover limit orders here because I looked from this trade and I was like, I almost got a heart attack here because technically I just went in with $20,000, which is typically for an A plus setup. And I just did it catching a falling knife. So that was really risky. I closed it and I was like, man, today is so easy to give back profits or to do something stupid. And then I check and I'm up, you know, 1.1 thousand. I'm just like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and call it. So yeah, that's still what I'm up right now. 1.1. I didn't do any more trades. I wrote in the discord and eh, it's not really my environment today. It feels a little bit risky. Maybe we'll get better setups tomorrow, but um, I'll, I'll definitely take the profit today. I think it's a, a great win for the amount of trades. I think, I think I did below 10 trades and without a question, sizing initially a bit higher was really, really important to getting a nice green today. However, I do want to emphasize this probably won't work for everyone. I am more of a scalper, a quick trader. If you're looking to accumulate a position, hold longer, this will probably not be the way to go. You'll have to look at your stats, see what works for you best, and make sure to build a system around what works best for you so you can capitalize and 10X on what you do right and reduce what you do wrong as much as possible. Thanks for tuning in guys and dropping that like. I'll see you next time.